Well, Dress Barn is closing all of its 650 stores nationwide, and that means a large number, nearly 7,000 workers, could soon be out of work. And analysts say that the women's clothing chain had lost customers after its parent company failed to invest in the brand. Dress Barn is the latest to join a wave of store closures happening in the U.S. USA Today reports that with the Dress Barn closures, there are more than 7,000 closings announced for 2019. That's already exceeded how many were announced in 2018. These closures mean thousands are losing their jobs despite low national unemployment rates in the country. Joining me now, Mark Muro. He's a senior fellow at the Brookings Institute Metropolitan Policy Program. So, Mark, I mean, we keep hearing about this retail apocalypse for some time now. You're seeing more and more stores closing, but can you explain what's really driving these closures? Are people just not going to stores anymore? Yeah, well, people aren't going to stores, but there's a reason for that, and that's because software is eating everything, and the digital apocalypse is beginning to swallow uh, retail as it has been for quite a while. So e-commerce is really the major factor of the, the present and future of physical, e uh, physical retail now, and there's just no, it's very clear that that is the main driver of, of much of this stress. But can I tell you, Mark, you know, I buy, I do a lot of shopping online and I still go back to the retail to return my purchases. In fact, I did this on Monday, returned a ton of stuff, really annoyed the, the cashier having to do this. <laughs> but, you know, you say that this is white noise on the economy, that enough people are not paying attention to these jobs being lost. Yeah, it, I, mean, I think we know that uh, you know physical retail jobs are going away. We see the the, the shuttered uh, uh, storefronts, but we do, we're, we're losing track that this is a major social change for the country, a major change in how uh, maybe non-college educated workers, millions of them, have made ends meet. So you know, I I actually do think that this is actually one an underplayed uh, story about mm -hmm. where things are going in our country right now. Yeah, you know, when you talk about e-commerce growing so much, is there any way for retail to not be on its sort of last breath? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, retail needs to do what the machines can't do. So the machines, uh, you know, should expedite checkout, expedite cashiering, uh, those, those activities, those sort of mundane aspects, often the irritating aspects, need to go away and great retailing needs to be customer friendly, investing in interesting new delivery, uh, physical, advi you know, on-site advice, all of that. So becoming more interesting, more human and let the machines do the boring stuff. So that cashier I mentioned, you know, if this was somebody who was losing their job, can these folks in retail somehow find a job in e-commerce? Uh, it's tough, it's a different mix. I mean, remember, e-commerce uh, uh, e is often in different places. It's concentrated in, in, in uh, remote places sometimes, such as the big, big remote cities, like, like Seattle, obviously. Uh, and then the job mix is different. Uh, many of the jobs are in fulfillment or they're high tech. So it's either you know, people running the digital uh, operation or fulfillment, which are tough jobs in warehouses. I gotta say, Mark, I do feel guilty sometimes for being on my laptop and ordering clothes, but it is so efficient. I, I just don't see myself going into stores anymore. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that the, the stores you're gonna go into are gonna need to offer very special mm -hmm. uh, experiences. I think the problem, though, is we're unwinding, you know, the kind of physical uh, fabric of so many city streets and especially suburban America. So, you know, things are gonna look different uh, in the future. Mark Moreau, so grateful you could join us, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Rena. Take care.